Welcome everyone to a very quick video of Prehistoric Kingdom. Today we are building a sketch habitat. More about what exactly that is in a second, but the animal that goes in is a very special one and that is the, let me completely pronounce this wrong, but I uh, try, you know, it's the Paraceratherium. I think somehow like that it should be pronounced. I'm super bad at these pronunciations. It's a freaking big rhino tape here, I want to call it, okay? Um, it is potentially the largest mammal ever to walk on Earth, and um, I've, I've just seen it the days that, you know, Prehistoric Kingdom uh, announced the integration of that animal, and I wanted to go back to Prehistoric Kingdom for a while now. Uh, it's been quite some time that I've been in this game, other than planning my house, but, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it's been a long time since I have done a habitat. And there are so many cool new things in the game that I thought, okay, let's give it a try. But I said at the beginning that this is going to be a, a little, <clears throat> I'm sorry, a little sketch habitat. What does that mean? Well, it's not like super crazy detailed or like super intricate in terms of what I'm doing, but I wanted to see if my idea that I had in mind to translate into the game as quickly, but then again, as detailed as possible. So see that as a download of my mind, ideas, uh, craziness in my head, whatever you want to call that. But uh, this is exactly what I wanted to try with this. I wanted to see how the new elements of the game work, just like a, a roundup of, um, of the game's development, so to say, in terms of building something. Uh, I will talk about a bit more of what this habitat idea is that I had in mind, but... Um, I, you know, I just quickly looked into where this animal would have lived in the past, and uh, so I figured it was, like, spread out quite um, large, so it, it was really in, in different regions of the Earth. So I was like, okay, you know what, then I'm just going with a very, like, lush mixed habitat in terms of uh, the flora and fauna. It's basically somewhat Mediterranean, a bit jungle-ish, not too much, you know, that kind of stuff. But I've seen they would have also lived a bit more into the desert, so, you know, they could cope with uh, some temperatures. And uh, the closest relative, as I could find from Wikipedia and so on, might be the, the you know, the modern day rhino. But then you also have like the family of tapirs in there. Uh, and it's insane how big this animal is. So I needed to scale up the entire build here uh, quite a bit. I also figured a couple of things I'm still not 100% happy with when it comes to prehistoric kingdom in general, but I'll talk about that in a second. Um, this one over here is pretty nice. This is a new variant of the rocks that they have in game. Uh, I was a bit confused at the beginning, um, simply because I thought these were the dynamic textures rock rocks in general, but I thought uh, that was the one variant. But in fact, they have three different variants of it, which I love because that means you don't have also the chance to recolor the yeah, what is that? Is it like the dirt on top of it or like the shading? Um, you also have three different variants when it comes to um, the type of corrosion or erosion or whatever you have on there. So you've got some with snow, with sand and with like moss. And these three can be individually recolored, which is kind of cool because that gives you the chance to uh, deal with different uh, variants of rocks, but then again also with the different textures. Uh, I'm going to use some of the other textures at the end of the video uh, on the viewing gallery, but it's really cool how you can now manipulate this. And you also need to, and this is another, yeah, maybe this is already one point I'm still not 100% happy with, and this is the terraforming tool in this game. Uh, it is quite similar to Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster, however, it still is not as powerful and not as precise when it comes to certain things. Um, and the textures sometimes do not really work exactly the way they should. Um, it has the same issue as City Skylands. Um, for whatever reason, these two games feature a pretty similar um, voxel-based tool, I guess it is, uh, where you can manipulate the terrain very nicely, but th both of them can't go beyond 90 degrees angle in terms of having an overhang of terrain, like, you know, making like an archway out of terrain is just pretty much impossible. And the same goes for uh, City Skylines. Not sure if that's something to do with the engine or what exactly is going on, but this 
fe this, this feature is so much missing because I had this or I have this in Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster um, that I always struggle to come up with these organic form factors because sometimes you just have that little overhang. You've got a little bump, you know, you have got something like this extended from the terrain where you can then move some rocks in and so on and just play with the texture and this is missing in here. Um, so yeah, as I can see, this is also like a very, very base shelter. Uh, it's not meant to be super accurate or not meant to be the, the finished version. Uh, I kind of enjoyed building quite a lot, but as I don't have too much time at the moment, unfortunately I couldn't go the extra mile, which I would have loved to, but <clears throat> You can also hear from my voice. Now, as I'm doing good again, I'm fully healthy, I'm totally back to grips. The pollen allergy comes around the corner. I was like, hello, you know, you feel too good. How about pollen allergy? Are you, are you, are you okay with that? And I'm like, no, but the pollen allergy was like, how about 19 degrees then? And yeah, here we are having to suffer from the pollen again. It's fine though, it's okay, but um, yeah. Pair that with the fact that I'm still not having a proper shower. Uh, it's kind of annoying because I, you know, I, I'm not sure if you guys do suffer from pollen as well. I hope you don't because it's annoying. It's like not super bad, but it's just like annoying. Um, and basically, at least for me, I have to, um, you know, clean my hair every day because like, you know, and also shave quite a bit more often than usual because Obviously all the pollen have the best of times getting stuck in hair, you know, and this is why uh, every day it would be good to take a shower, you know, clean off the hair, get some shampoo and so on and kill basically all the pollen because carrying them around is not the best thing to do if you're allergic to them, you know. Uh, so that, that's why uh, potentially it's the best idea to uh, make sure your hair are always cleaned and uh, without a proper shower you know, it's a bit harder than usual, but it's, you know, we're getting there, we are getting there. So you can see there's like a super open and wide viewing gallery, uh, like with this overhang. This is exactly what I said. I would have loved to make this, first of all, out of terrain. Uh, this is me, by the way, testing the different shades. And I found one. This one over here is actually the snow one, but um, if you take the snow one and gray that out, it looks a little bit as if this is like some dried out stone, which I love. It's, it's kind of a really cool texture. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm trying some different things here with building some plateaus, uh, the different textures that came with the latest updates. Still a couple of little issues I have with some of the textures, but I'm trying to blend them in as best as possible at the moment. And I'm quite happy with the result at the end. Just take that as a little sketch for a proper habitat, okay? So if I'm, if I'm having the time in the next coming weeks, I really do want to make like a very detailed version of this one over here and then upload this to the workshop for you guys. If you have some ideas, uh, what else could go in here? And also, oh, that's a very good point. I struggled a little bit to come up with uh, potential enrichment items for the uh, uh, Paraceratherium. Is that how you pronounce that thing still? Anyways, I'm trying to avoid that for the rest of the video now. Um, if you have some cool ideas, I, you know, I try to come up with some um, uh, enrichment items that usually would be seen on elephants, because at least that's the second biggest animal I can think of, uh, at least that we do have nowadays and that does have uh, enrichment items so like some hanging barrels and stuff. But then again, the para is still like two times almost bigger than an elephant. Not quite, but like still a lot bigger uh, than you would think. And I'm not sure how big the barrel must have been, but <laughs> you know, something like that should be, should be doable. Um, I, I would love to just do some fake enrichment items. Honestly, I also would love uh, to see some actual enrichment items by the team of uh, Prehistoric Kingdom by now. Uh, we do have some food and stuff, you know, but that's about it. I just, I do want to have some. Uh, over here, I, I just kind of made this bridge with a bit of a bigger ramp. And again, if you are into these kind of rules for zoos and blah, 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 you know that this ramp is by far too much angled and no one could actually get up there with a wheelchair, but just imagine you could, okay? Um, I, you know, I didn't want to make this ramp like pretty much accurate. How much, I think it's five degrees or something you're allowed to go or like 5.5 or whatever. Forgot the ratio, but it's really not that big of a uh, incline. And um, the problem is if you, if you do that, you must build that into your design a lot better than I did over here. This is just like a proper bridge. It could also be like a, you know, traffic bridge or something like that. But um, if you do this in proper zoo design, you would 
really built this into like maybe like a circular um, staircase that goes around to play with the incline and reduce the space needed for that. But yeah, um, over here, I'm just trying to come up with a, an easy solution for this central uh, thing over here and then finally get this in. Um, I was a bit confused. Um, you can see that putting in that the female seems to be super small in comparison. <clears throat> I'm not sure if this is just like at the other end, uh, end of the size slider of Prehistoric Kingdom or if it's really meant to be that small. Um, you will know that, so put that in the comments, please, and just enlighten me if that's the, tr the case, that the female was that much smaller. I was a bit confused because usually, also with rhinos and stuff, it's not that dramatic of a of a difference. Um, yeah, I was also putting some trees in just for the context, and uh, it, it turned out a little bit too much deserty at the end of the day, but... Um, you know, if I would go back to this habitat and just kind of clean things off and make things better, um, I would definitely go in and, and change a couple of uh, yeah the textures as well, just to make that look a bit better. But you can also tell with the video how much better I got already to the end of the video, simply because um, I, I got back into the game. Yeah, I, it's really about time that I do like a little uh, in-between verdict of Prehistoric Kingdom. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments down below if we should do like a little review of the current state of Prehistoric Kingdom. I think it's really much worth it because there's so much good in that game um, that I really want to talk about that in detail. But this video is about the para, as you can tell, with this water stream. I haven't seen them walking into the water, by the way. I'm not sure if the pathfinding for them is not 100% accurate at the moment, but um, I wasn't really able to, to make them cross the river as it was supposed to, um, because I really made sure that we have some points where there is shallow water. So I'm not sure if that's just because I didn't wait long enough or if there's something else blocking it. Really not sure, but um, yeah. So that's that. Here you can see this is the final sketch of the habitat. I'm quite happy with it. I'm also quite happy with how the shelter integrates into the landscape. Um, I would need to do a bit more theming around this, make like a proper door or something, but um, all over, I'm quite happy with how that turned out. I hope you guys are happy too. If you're happy and you're new to the channel, you want to see more of this stuff, and if you like the concept of a sketch habitat, yeah, make sure to subscribe to the channel. That will help me out a lot, will help you out a lot as well, because you'll get some content you may like in the future. Thank you so much, have a good day, stay safe, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Goodbye.